We're practicing to put an end to stress, suffering, and pain. But the practice itself also involves stress, suffering, and pain. As the Buddha said, there are times when you realize that you've got certain unskillful qualities in the mind and they're not going away as you live according to your ease, live by your pleasure. So you have to be willing to put up with some pain. In other words, we're not out looking for pain in order to prove a point. I recently read someone claiming that people who choose the monastic path are the young men who are looking for the hardest path they can find. Kind of a macho masochism. But that's not the case at all. You don't look for any extra pain more than you have to. But you realize there are times when if you don't put up with some pain, don't put up with some stress and suffering. Greed, anger, and illusion are not going to go away from your mind. The image that the Buddha gives is of a fletcher, someone who makes arrows, and he has to straighten the arrow shaft next to a flame. And as long as the shaft isn't straight yet, you have to keep putting it next to the flame. First this side, then that side. Then once the shaft is straightened, then you don't need to put up with the pain anymore. So our practice is not necessarily heading in the pain, but it is going to involve some pain so that we can get beyond it. This is why the Buddha began his Omvara Bhatimoka, one of his first major summaries of the whole path, by saying that patient endurance is the utmost austerity. Back in that time, there were people who practiced in different austerities to burn away their defilements or burn away their past karma or whatever. And as the Buddha pointed out, it didn't have to be a particular type of physical austerity, you know, standing on one leg out in the sun. lying down on a bed of nails or whatever. The greatest austerity is learning how to develop the quality of endurance in the mind. It's a mental quality that we're after here, one that can live with pain and not get upset by it. The comparison the Buddha gave is with an elephant going into battle. If the elephant has been trained, And no matter what horrible sights or sounds or smells or tastes or tactile sensations it encounters, it's not swayed. No matter what enticing sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations, it's not swayed. It's the kind of quality you want to develop in the practice. Now to develop it, you have to focus on the mind. To what extent is the mind making it harder to endure these things? Buddha gives the example of a person shot by an arrow, and being shot by one arrow isn't enough, he shoots himself with more arrows. And it's the extra arrows that are the problem. As John Fuang once said, if the pain isn't killing you, you can take it, physical pain. But for most of us, the problem is not so much the physical pain, it's all that extra suffering that we add on top of it. So you want to keep looking into the mind. What are these extra arrows you're shooting at it, and how can you prevent yourself from shooting them? One is to develop a good sense of humor around the whole situation. I don't know exactly what the word for humor is in Pali, but you see a few examples here and there when the Buddha talks about the conditions for 
aroused effort as opposed to the conditions for laziness. And it turns out the external conditions are the same in either case. If you haven't eaten enough, you sit there complaining, I can't practice today, I have no energy, I'm feeling hungry, I'm feeling tired and weak. That's a condition for laziness. The condition for aroused effort is if you haven't eaten enough, you say, ah, oh, the body is light. I don't have to worry about digesting my food today. I'm not sleepy or drowsy or weighed down by the food. And the way it expresses it in each case, there is a humor to the whole sutta. So that's one thing, learning how to have a good humor about the practice. There's that story of the the Englishman who went across northern Canada with a group of Dene Indians. And he noticed that on the days when they couldn't find any food, that was the days they joked the most. They were able to keep up their spirits. Or was in that passage in Slaughterhouse Five, where the American prisoner of war happens to go over and visit a section of the prisoner of war prison where the British troops are. And the British troops are all very organized. They're putting on comedy sketches. They're, they're basically having a good time. They're suffering a lot less than the Americans because they're determined to enjoy themselves as much as possible in the face of a very difficult situation. So to try to keep that attitude going as you practice. This is why adjusting the breath is sometimes called playing with the breath. If you're sitting with pain, you'll ask yourself, what can the breath do that I've never had it do before? And think of it different ways you've never thought of it before, coming in and out different parts of the body, running in different ways through the body, connecting up in different ways. See what you can do to keep yourself entertained with the breath to gladden the mind. It's one attitude to keep in mind. The second one is to have an attitude of goodwill, infinite goodwill. Many of the Buddha's teachings on patience bring up this point after he was wounded by Devadatta. Got a stone sliver in his foot. Pain was excruciating. So he went to lie down. Mara comes up to taunt him. So are you drunk, or what's, what's your problem here? And he says, I'm not drunk, I'm not in a stupor. I lie down with sympathy for all beings. That's the point that minimizes the pain, it's developing a sense of goodwill for everybody, even the people who had injured him. There's another passage where the Buddha talks about the different ways that people can speak to you. They can speak in timely or untimely ways. They can speak with good intentions or bad intentions. Say words that are true or false. So on down the line. And so when something unpleasant comes up, you can analyze it. This is the third quality, your ability to step back from the situation and not put it into a, a narrative where you're the person that's suffering. Ask yourself, those words that were said, were they timely or untimely, true or false, beneficial or harmful? Just by thinking in those terms, you pull yourself out of the narrative and you remind yourself this is the human condition. The Buddha says when people have wronged you or have wronged people that you love or have done good things for people you hate, keep reminding yourself, what should I expect? I mean, this is the human condition. Put things into the abstract. Pull yourself out of the condition of being the victim. Just learn how to analyze it. This goes for the physical pain that comes up in the meditation as well. Part of the mind says, why am I doing this? Why am I torturing myself? Well, look at that thought simply as a thought arising and passing away. Look at the pain simply as a feeling arising and passing away. 
There's a great passage in the canon where the Buddha says, if someone says something really hurtful, tell yourself, ah, a sound has made contact at the ear. We usually don't think in those terms. We think about, why is that person saying it to me? We create that narrative that just lays more suffering on the mind. The next time someone says something really unpleasant to you, remind yourself, oh, an unpleasant sound has made contact at the ear. It depersonalizes it. Pulls you out of it. And then the Buddha says, spread thoughts of goodwill to all beings, starting with the person who's harmed you, and spreading to include everybody, including yourself. Because remind yourself, if you're sitting here moaning and groaning about the pain, you're not really showing goodwill for yourself. Goodwill for yourself is learning how to pull yourself out of the suffering, not to identify with it, not to glamorize it, not to romanticize it, not to insist on your right to suffer. You're here to find a way around it. And a lot of the issue of suffering is the suffering that's caused by the mind. As John Lee says there are two kinds of suffering. There's just the suffering of natural causes, which is natural, and then there's the unnatural suffering, which comes from our craving. And often our craving manifests itself as these narratives that we want to tell about ourselves about whatever's happening. So the trick to developing endurance is to learn to look at the mind. And learning how to sit with pain is often a good way of seeing what's happening in the mind. That old image of the watering hole out in the savanna is a good one to keep in mind. If you want to survey the animals in the savanna or take a documentary film of the animals in the savanna or take a picture of the animals in the savanna. You don't go wandering around the savanna. They'll hide from you. You go to the watering hole, and any animal in the area is going to come to the watering hole at some point during the day or the night, and that's when you can observe and take pictures and take a documentary. It's the same with the mind. When there's pain and you're sitting with it, all the unskillful little animals in your mind are going to come up at some point, and you're in a great position to observe them. You say, ah, this is what anger is like. This is how it comes. This is how it goes. This is how the victim comes. This is how the victim goes. This is how the whining member of the committee comes, how it goes. You get to see them all. And as you see them, you learn how not to identify with them. Try to develop that sense of humor, that ability to pull yourself out of the narrative, simply by analyzing what's going on in impersonal terms. And develop goodwill for all beings. When personal terms do come up, you want to develop that sense of goodwill for all. As the Buddha says, with a mind like earth. Again, he's got that humorous story of the man who comes along and tries to dig at the earth and spit at the earth and urinate at the earth and says, be without earth, be without earth. But he's never going to succeed because the earth is so large. We want to make your mind that large. So no pain, physical pain, mental pain, can have an impact. These attitudes of humor, infinite goodwill, and the ability to see things in impersonal terms. That's how you keep yourself from shooting those extra arrows. That's how your endurance can become lasting and strong.